artists welcome to my home studio uh, I'm gonna do a, a, a video for you about doing some painting a painting project that is similar to you know what we would normally do with watercolors with limited supplies at home I'm gonna ask you to make uh, some artwork using coffee and if you don't have coffee on hand um, you can also use balsamic vinegar or you could use soy sauce works good too and your studio or wherever you're making art is going to smell fantastic so there'll be a slide next that will show you uh, the supplies you need there'll also be a document that has some tips and tricks some examples of what these things look like and um, the list of supplies as well okay have fun make some coffee art Okay, this is the setup that I have uh, for my painting with coffee. So let's start with coffee. There's my gorgeous cup made by local artist Dawn Candy from Little Sister Pottery if you want to pick one of those up. Gorgeous. Filled with this morning's coffee uh, and a spoon. Then I have a few containers that I've added. I've got some water. And a few little containers, any container will do. I've got a palette with some uh, some coffee on it, diluted to different strengths, light to dark. And I have larger ones too. So if you don't have a palette, any little container will do. Some kind of mark making tool, whether it's, you know, the Q-tips, um, whether it's paint brushes or a, a skewer, anything you have that you can sort of move things around on the page, a little bit of water. Um, I found that when I did my uh, coffee paintings that having a little bit of this instant coffee uh, and instant coffee grounds was a really uh, great addition to make the really kind of dark coffee. Uh, I also found it fun to use some little cookie cutters, so if you have some of those, and to clean up your messes. Everybody should have lots of this around the house according to social media. Um, Paper, any paper will do. We've got regular printer paper. Um, if you rip a page out of your sketchbook, I know that's a hard thing to do, but it, sometimes that's a little thicker paper than regular paper. I took apart uh, a lunch bag, um, and I might do some work on that. I tore a page out of an old book, um, and then I do have some nice art paper here. So any paper will do, and uh, collect all your supplies. Get them laid out and mix up your coffee and get ready for some painting. Okay. This is the result of my experiments. And anytime you start working with a new medium, it's a good idea to sort of get your feet under you and see what this medium will do. Play around with it a little bit and experiment. So the first experiment I did, you watch the, the time-lapse video, is I, I did strong coffee and then I added water and it got weaker and weaker. So I, I have lots of values that I can use um, to layer things up. I'm finding that as I'm working with the coffee as a medium, it's acting a lot like watercolor. So I'm gonna give you, there'll be a little tip at the end uh, where you can look at a bunch of my watercolor uh, tips that you can follow through. I made two big puddles of sort of wet coffee and then in here I sprinkled um, some instant coffee and I got these really cool little explosions that I absolutely love. This one I put wet coffee and then I put some regular old coffee grounds in and when it dried they just blew away and it was that was a bit of a fail. This was the Q-tips, little Q-tip dots. Um, I like the way some of those sort of fade away. Um, I painted here. This was really cool. I did a little puddle and then I blew it with a straw. Um, little poofs work the best. Um, my cookie cutters dipped in, um, in the 
uh, coffee, which you I I realized I could probably use the bottom of a coffee cup. It would look just as well. But you can do use different kinds of shapes and look around your house for different shaped objects that you can press into the coffee and sort of make marks with that. This is a little pool that I sort of pulled around with a Q-tip, um, and I sort of like how it's settled in the ends there. Um, I decided that in, you know in some areas I might want to. This is just a piece of white chalk. I might want to work into some areas with a little bit of white later on. Um, so then here are the results. I did a couple of testers. So I used a couple of things from uh, my tester. I liked the circles and I really liked the straw. So I used both of those. That's my dog barking in the background. She barks at everything. Uh, so I used the circles and I used the straws and when that dried I drew a couple of koi fish into it I set it on its side like this and let it drip a little bit too as it dried what I found when I was painting this is It's really good to let the layers dry in between so you paint on a little bit Let it dry completely and then do another layer and if you're impatient like me Use a blow dryer uh, and blow dryer will do cool funky things like this, too. Uh, I then took just a regular old black pen um, and I love to draw, so I did some drawing into these after I painted them. So there's one. This one went a little nuts. I sort of pulled things around with the Q-tip and I dripped um, and it sort of dried with this weird thing in the middle that I'm not loving, but I do love this area. So I think I might work into that a little bit more and basically what I was doing there is going in and sort of drawing shapes and, and allowing my mind to just kind of doodle and, and go where it wants to and it's becoming this abstract building with all these nice little white windows. So I kind of like that and I think I might crop this guy out and have it be a smaller piece. The third thing that I did with the coffee to experiment with was... Uh, I painted so white piece of paper and I just drew these koi fish on there I really like the watery nature of the coffee so I thought fish would be a good thing to paint so um and this is about five layers of paint so building up your layers because you only have one color to work with um, this would be your first layer and then second layer and then it gets darker the more layers you put on and then when I was all done painting I took a big risk which I love also and I splattered some and dripped some paint on there it's still a little bit dry I think I might drip that around a little bit and see what I can do with though whoops and then just take a risk try something new see what happens um, and uh, Play around with this new medium, see what it'll do for you.